Well, welcome to the show today. My name is Christian Ravston. I'm the CEO of Foxstone Financial, and this is, of course, the Foxstone Financial Wealth Matters Show. Uh, I am very excited to have a good uh, friend in here, a guest, uh, Deborah. Thank you for being here with me today. Thank you for having me. Well, I am excited to have you because you are um, a wizard when it comes to numbers, and you're a wizard when it comes to working with businesses. And uh, again, so this show, what we're trying to do is bring people into uh, and onto the show that actually have an impact on people's lives. And that's absolutely what you do. You have a fantastic and a, an absolutely massive impact on people's lives and in their businesses on how you go in and, and help people understand their cash flow, right? That's right. So tell us a little bit about yourself and, um, and, and I love your backstory. So tell people about your backstory and how you got into the business and a little bit about yourself. Well, so first of all, I get bragging rights for being a fifth generation Coloradian. So I was, I was born and raised here. Um, Not too many people like that here. No, but that's, that's, that's the you. here. I'm yep. fifth generation. Um, and um, so basically I grew up uh, doing technology the short version of my story, and um, I ended up on the East Coast for a little bit. But I moved back here in 98, and I had an opportunity to go in on a ground floor. Um, well, it wasn't a ground floor, but I went into a, a travel company to do technology. Mm-hmm. And I ended up becoming the CEO of that company, and we took a $23 million travel company and grew it to $40 million. Wow. And the reason I said 1998 is because that was during 9/11. That it was over a five-year period. So we took this company to 40 million, and I'm a CEO of a 40 million dollar company. And I ended up getting embezzled from by my own CFO and my own COO. And it was quite a surprise. It was very dramatic. Um, people flew in from United Airlines into our office, Greenwood Village Police, and I had no idea what was going on. So um, it ended up being the C. FO and the COO, and I was not held accountable for that, but I could have been. Yeah. And in fact, that was during Enron, and those folks ended up going to jail. They said they didn't do it, but they still went to jail. Um, So that ignited the beginning of the passion for me of how do you run a company Mm -hmm. and not understand your financials well enough that you can be embezzled from? So that company ended up getting sold, and I I said, I'm an entrepreneur, so I'm going to go try this again. And I went and I bought a small business. It was just bricks and mortar, but I bought real estate with it. Mm -hmm. So going into it, I went in with a lot of debt. This time I knew my financials. The problem was I didn't understand cash flow, and I'm in a screen printing and embroidery business. We're an NFL screen printer and mm-hmm. so forth, but the margins were so low and I had such high debt, I didn't. I wasn't able to cash flow it. So that story didn't end well. I didn't go bankrupt, but I could have. But I went down with my dignity, and I sold everything at a fire sale. So over that 10-year period, I learned about education on fin- financials. If you're going to be a CEO, you better darn well know your mm-hmm. financials. And the second piece, and the most important piece, really, is cash flow. And um, in fact, about 82% of businesses will fail due to poor cash flow or cash flow management. So I took those 10 years, it took me a year to lick my wounds and yeah. put myself back up one more time. And I launched this business. So I'm 11 years old. Centennial Revenue Management is 11 years old. And we are focused on the education of financials for um, business owners. And I like to say from a CEO perspective, so mm-hmm. we're different than the CPA perspective. And we focus on the movement of money or cash flow money in and money out. So that's the biggest. So I do want to make a distinction for the, for those that are listening and watching. Deborah works very closely with CPAs. Mm-hmm. She doesn't take over as the CPA. So again, explain that so that people properly understand, you know, what it is that you do. Um, because they may say, and trust me, I've heard it before, right? <laughs> well, I already have a CPA, right. right? I already have an advisor, right? Right. I already have this person. And you say, that's great. Let's, in, let's invite them to the table. So tell, tell us a little bit about your methodology and how you like to work with the business owner and the CPA and the advisor and, and um, kind of the seats around the table. 
Yes, yes. And you and I have partnered a couple of times with mm-hmm. those um, at the table. Yeah, so I like to, so a CPA is focused on, uh, they're subject matter experts. So I try to educate business owners on surrounding themselves for subject matter experts. I function as a CFO or a cash flow consultant. A CPA is focused on tax liabilities and helping keep you out of harm's way. But think about it, a CPA is really a rear view mirror thinker because they're looking at something as when the line in the sand is drawn Mm -hmm. for tax estimates and so forth. And then they give you strategy for taxes. Um, I'm a cash flow strategist. So managing cash flow takes proactive strategy. So I'm always looking into the future. So I like to say, what if you could have the same conversation with your CPA and your cash flow strategist or your CFO to help optimize cash flow and minimize your tax liabilities? Because our objectives are different, right? That's like... That's like the genie in the bottle, right? That's what everybody's looking for. Right. They're wanting to reduce tax liabilities while keeping cash flow or income high. That's right. But in order to have good cash flow, I'm at odds with the CPA because the CPA <laughs> right. wants to minimize. Right. They want you to have the lowest drop to your bottom line so you don't pay taxes. Right. But it, the reality is you have to have a minimum drop to the bottom line for good cash flow. Mm-hmm. So then therein lies my subject matter expert team. So um, as you know, working with me, if um, we work a lot with dental practices, and if that dentist is making a lot of money, they're likely to pay a lot of taxes. So why not bring in a subject matter expert like you that can say, well, what can we help to do to get more money in your pocket through an investment strategy? Right. So now we've added... Uh, financial planner, wealth manager, a captive insurance program to our seat at the table. Mm -hmm. And you go in and when you sit down and you're working with a business owner, what is it that, you know, you're exactly looking for? I mean, you pour through the financials, do you not? Yes. That's the first thing I do is, so at the beginning I I said, I'm a, um, I grew up doing technology, so I'm not an accountant. I have just a general business degree, so I'm from the school of hard knocks of what you don't know. You don't know about your money as a business owner. So the first thing I do is I go in and I look at their financials. I go right into QuickBooks or their accounting software, and I vet their financials. Mm -hmm. So that's another subject matter expert is the bookkeeper. I call that person the keeper of the cash flow. Yeah. And so once I get an idea of their books and their financial integrity, Mm -hmm. um, I can't forecast if the financials don't have the integrity. So that's the first thing I'm looking at. And the second thing I'm asking is, have you filed your taxes? So if we're like mid-year and they're still not filed, having filed their taxes, now the flag is getting raised on, well, how good is your CPA and do we need to look at that? So I'm kind of an advocate for the CEO to help bring my level of expertise and experience and say, you know what, let's let's replace that bookkeeper or let's let me help educate your bookkeeper on better practices. So you do a lot of education with existing people in place and or looking to potentially bring in and fill in gaps within the leadership team. And that leadership team may be a better bookkeeper, may be a better CFO, may be a better CPA, Mm -hmm. or one that fits that practice better, correct? That's correct. And then I also bring in additional subject matter experts, wealth managers, bankers. That's always a big deal, too, as a banker would be a good subject matter expert because if they're carrying a lot of debt, um, let's see if we can restructure debt. What do Mm -hmm. we need to do to get more money in their pocket? So what is the typical plan with, you know, as you work with someone, what does that typical plan look like? Is it, you know, you go in, again, I call you the wizard of cash flow. You go in, you look at their financials and say, okay, you know, we need to do X, Y, Z, you know, A through Z or A through L. How does that work? And I mean, tell us, fill us in a little bit more about, you know, how how you go about fixing these companies. Yeah, there is a method to my madness. Yeah. Um, so I go in and I, uh, number one, ask them to commit to me at least for like a six month engagement because it takes time to bubble up what I call the dirty little secrets in their financials. So mm-hmm. I'm always talking about the dirty little secrets of cash flow. So I, and by them committing, they can always have an exit plan if they don't like me or whatever, they can terminate. But the idea is for them to commit to this process. I come with a methodology that I created when I launched this business. And it's what I learned from those 10 years of getting my, my hiney kicked <laughs> with both education and cash flow. Yeah. So I go in and I look at their financials. And the first thing I want to do is I want to cash flow 
it and see what does it look like. So my methodology that I use takes a four-month trend off of a business financials. I combine Mm -hmm. profit and loss and balance sheet, and I forecast eight months into the future. And it's moving month to month with the business. So the owner can't say, well, it was a summer, it was slower, it was busy. I take a four-month story of their financials, and I cast it out eight months into the future. So number one, I need to have financials with integrity. So I'm I'm looking at their bookkeeping and we're getting all of that caught up and up to date. The second thing I want to know is what's their tax liabilities for the season for this year. So we might be um, forecasting quarterly tax estimates and so forth. So that might warrant a conversation with their CPA. And then I go through uh, a process meeting twice a month. And we um, first month, we review their financials, lock in a forecast, create strategy to help get more money in their pocket or drop more money to the bottom line. And second meeting of the month, we are talking uh, about measuring the strategies, the metrics, and are we making movement. Throughout this process, though, I am educating the business owner on their financials. So we're constantly looking at a balance sheet. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the weakest link, by the way. The balance sheet? Uh, is the weakest link in um, a business owner's understanding of their financials. Because most CPAs are not educating them on their balance sheet because it's from the beginning of time. So it doesn't really have relevance to tax liabilities to a degree. Right. It doesn't have anything to do, well, it has some to do, but they're not looking at it for profitability. So most mm-hmm. business owners are looking at their pro- um, profit and loss. So I'm educating on the balance sheet because there's lots of dirty little secrets on yeah. the balance sheet. So I do want to say that I have seen your spreadsheets and I, as we've worked on clients together, your spreadsheets are unbelievably accurate. And if people stick with it, Mm-hmm. they see an absolute turnaround in their business, right? Correct. So that's pretty amazing. I mean, your school of hard knocks is dead on 99.9% of the time. It's pretty amazing. Thank you. So it is, it is. That's congratulations. I mean, that's that's how you've been able to grow your business as you have is because it works and it works really well. Yes, and I may I share one story real quick to show that? I love success stories. Okay, so, um, and this was back when I was in the Crankset group there, and um, I got, got referred into a medical practice, and it was in July of that year, and um, it was about a $5 million medical practice billing out, and they had two doctors were the owners, but they had about 35 team members on their team. So it's a big practice. It was a big practice, and... Um, they were having a significant cash flow. So basically owners were not taking as much salary and everybody on the staff was taking a pay cut. So I went in, did my process, looked at their financials, looked at everything from the beginning of the year and they had some bookkeeping challenges. So we fixed that. But mostly they had executed a strategy that a lot of times CPAs will do at the end of the year and say, whoa, you're so profitable. We need, if you need to go buy anything, if you want to go spend some money, let's do it now so that we can reduce that taxable income. And they did that. Well, in, in when I looked in the rearview mirror for them, in January, they were already start, starting out with low cash requirements, but they didn't realize it. And so it was a slow storm that yep. burned from January through July when they just raised their hand and said, I can't take it anymore. And they just drained their cash at the beginning, at the end of that year. And then they were still spending the money the same way. Right. So I went through my process, which is this um, cash flow forecasting process, and I educated them on it. It also provides a month to month budget. So that was significant in that when a flu vaccine vendor came in and said, this is what you're going to we're going to sell you this month. They said, no, this is our budget. So they learned a couple of important numbers in their cash flow equation. And they were very eager to execute strategy. Mm -hmm. I brought a banker in thinking I was going to have to, we were going to have to do a loan, a a quick loan. Well, we turned them around in 90 days and I didn't, the banker was a little bit disappointed. (laughs) Yeah. Right. 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 But they did not have to borrow a penny. And within 90 days, um, I had turned them around by just changing the conversation and having them understand the movement of money in their practice. And they were back up and running. And to this day, I'm, you know, I'm still uh, I'm still a um, patient of theirs, but I wasn't at the time. Wow. Anyway, it was a pretty good story that. Yeah, 90 days. In 90 days, I turned them around. They had to have been unbelievably pleased that they they raised their hand and said, "Please help us!" Right? They're wa- they were waving the white flag. 
Yeah, they didn't under, and their CPA did not understand why they were having a cash flow problem. I mean, you would think with a practice that's billing $5 million a year, there wouldn't be any cash flow issues. Right, and they were very profitable. That was the other that was a dirty little secret. They were very profitable. So here's a dirty little secret about the balance sheet. I mentioned that they were um, two partners that owned it. Well, they were structured as such what's called a, um, a PLLC. So the two partners were taking guaranteed payments out of the balance sheet. Mm-hmm. So they were not part of W-2 wages that are on the profit and loss, right? Right. So they were taking their money off of the balance sheet. Well, nobody was watching the balance sheet. Significant amounts of money going off the balance sheet that was causing the cash flow squeeze. There you go. And that's why you educate on ca- on the balance sheet. Correct. Right? Mm-hmm. Not only do you educate on profit and loss in addition to the CPA, but you go through a budgeting process and you educate on the balance sheet. So so uh, business owners understand their financials. Yes, that's the most important thing. And the forecasting tool and methodology allows them to try on a strategy before they execute it. So like with your product, with um, if we wanted to do a captive insurance plan mm-hmm. with our uh, client, we can model those cash requirements because I'm looking eight months into the future. So now we're having a conversation with the CPA saying, well, what are the tax liabilities? Well, they're they're going to be paying a lot of money in taxes. So now we talk about a strategy, and if they execute a captive insurance, for example, well, let's cash flow that out. And make sure that we're yeah. not going to dis- we're not going to hurt cash flow where they're going to come out in the beginning of the year and say, "Oops, I shouldn't have spent so much on that strategy." Right. And part of your strategy is also looking at debt and how to service debt properly. I know we've been in several conversations with clients yes. where that's the conversation. You bring me in as a is you know that investment wealth manager expert potential t- potentially talking about uh, tax reduction strategies, but the conversation turns to in a good way as we have those seats around the table filled of how do we properly service their debt and you're leading that the entire time. Listen, here's their balance sheet, here's their P and L. We can service this debt better, and by doing that, it's going to lead to all of these other opportunities. Right. So, you know, debt is sometimes a necessary component of mm-hmm. building a business. And let's go back to a dental practice, for example. They just, to launch, they have a lot of debt because they've got to buy equipment. So when they make a lot of money, they're just worried about um, the tax liabilities of that. But a good good financial health for a company would mean that you also are creating strategies to not maintain that level of debt. Yeah, You want to be able to be bankable. You need to manage that debt. And the kind of dirty little secret about debt is that it doesn't really affect your profit and loss. So it has to be a cash flow strategy yeah. that you execute to help service that debt. So you have said several times in this conversation the dirty little secret. So I want that's almost like your trademarked that's your like your trademark thing. I mean you say that all the time. Right. Out of my purple hair. <laughs> that's true. You do love purple. And if you see on the screen you can see your website is purple. I know you love purple. I do love purple. So tell us a little bit about I mean Obviously, you told us your backstory, right? You didn't understand the financials, but like, how'd you come up with these dirty little secrets? Because they are in the financials, they're in the balance sheet and the profit and loss and in the cash flow. So, I mean, how is it? Just tell us a little bit more about this dirty little secret and, and what you do to help business owners, because you had said earlier that you ask for a six month engagement. So basically you're working yourself out of a job with these people. Yes, I'm not meant to be there forever. I want to transition and educate them so that they are healthy Mm -hmm. um, and then transition the forecasting tool over to their bookkeeper so that they're producing that on a monthly basis. Which you educated the bookkeeper, so. Yes, yes. They're trained in your methodology. Yes, yeah. So that is a dirty little secret. Um, A lot of times, so I come up with the dirty little secrets because every time I go into a business, I seem to bubble one up. It's like mm-hmm. you just didn't see that coming. Like the owner didn't see that coming. Right. And um, of course, over the years, I get a little bit quicker at finding them yeah. and bubbling those up. But the dirty little secrets are just things, you know, the thing about money and business, when you're a CEO and you've, you're, especially if you have a payroll and you've got skin in the game, you've got people you're responsible for paying. The conversation around money is basically, it's it's based on your 
your values. So how you manage your money at home Mm -hmm. is probably the values of how you're going to bring that into the business. How you manage your financial conversations at home is probably going to be how you are going to manage them in business. So someone like me can help facilitate educating a business owner to change that. We don't need you as a business owner managing like your home business or like your home finances. The dirty little secrets come about because um, business owners don't know how to talk to their bookkeeper or how to hold them accountable. They, the hardest one is holding their CPA accountable. Yeah, That's their most trusted advisor. And some sometimes CPAs are not doing their best jobs for their clients. And then what are the dirty little secrets there? What are they tolerating that they don't know they should be asking for? I think that's the big thing, right? You don't know what you don't know. Yes. So you need somebody like you in your corner saying, okay, this have you looked at this? Have you thought about this? Have you thought about this? Right? Let's bring your CPA in. Let's bring your bookkeeper in and let's let's talk about this because I feel like once a business owner, a good business owner understands what they should be looking at, they can put a culture in place. They can put the right people in place or the education in place to achieve what needs to be done, but they just they have no idea. Right. And when when you're at the helm of a company, employees most employees want to be there. They want to help the company grow. And think about it in its simplest place. Employees can only help um, in the financial arena two ways. One, by helping increase revenues or help decrease in expenses. Mm-hmm. So why not educate your team on the basics of your financial story? So don't make it the secret, you know, what's happening behind right. the, the veil. Educate them on, you know, like our payroll percentage is 50% of our revenue. So we team need to do something about that. A strategy could be don't have as much overtime or we're not dropping as much to the bottom line. It looks like we're profitable, but our goal is to dirty a little secret about that. Yeah. You need to have a 10% drop net profit to revenue ratio to just get started with good cash flow. Dirty little secret there. There you go. Mm-hmm. And that's, that is from lots of experience, mm-hmm. school of hard knocks. So the bottom line is, is if you want to to know more about these dirty little secrets, right? Deborah is absolutely full of them because she has lots and lots of experience. And you actually have, so the name of your business is Centennial Revenue Management. Correct. Correct. Mm -hmm. Uh, You also have another one, which is Total Cash Clarity. Yeah. So many years ago, I thought about, I used to call it cash flow in a box. So I wanted to create this app, if you will. So Mm -hmm. why not automate this methodology? But over, so last year we created the app and we call it Total Cash Clarity. Okay. And we trademarked it and you can go to totalcashclarity.com. Oh yeah. We're, you can see it up on the screen right now. Yes. Yes. And so we are actually, so for people that don't want to have a CFO or have somebody at my level into their company, they're a smaller business, but they want to educate themselves on yep. the methodology. Yep. You can go to the website and we're selling it on a subscription basis and it's real easy and it's just month in. Uh, one month at a time, so you can dip your toe in it. Yep. And it's for less than a haircut, we like to say, for the monthly fee. Maybe not for a woman. It might cost a little bit more, but for a man, <laughs> yeah. definitely less than a haircut. But you can go on the website, and we're starting to put out our dirty little secrets. We've got follow the money tips, so what I told you about the balance sheet, mm-hmm. you can go there. Um, some of that is on my centennialrevenuemanagement.com website, and there's some knowledge banks there in terms yeah. of follow the money tips. But Total Cash Clarity is designed for a small business owner that wants to dip their toe and educate themselves on cash flow forecasting. Which is key. Again, I, I can't say enough how the, the times that we've had to work together, how on, you know, on point your forecast is and how you work with these business owners. And you can see from the beginning of the, the engagement with these clients to the end how dialed they become about their numbers, right? I mean, they really continue. You make the businesses much, much more efficient and you make the business owners much more efficient. Well, that's huge. And so to for small to medium-sized businesses that want to dip their toes in, who wouldn't want to become more efficient and more profitable and understand their business better? And sleep better at night because that's really what it's designed for is yep. peace of mind and empowerment. So if you're going to have a cash flow problem, here's another dirty little secret. Another one. Another I love one. it. So cash flow is not about the next 30 or 60 days because think about it, that money is already in play. Right. If you have a significant payroll, go back to my medical practice, 
their payroll was already in play for at least the 30, 60 days, right? Mm -hmm. So um, cash flow is about 90 days to 120 days out. That's kind of the sweet spot. So in the forecasting tool, that's what we're looking for is how do you create strategy to get a different outcome? If you already know you're going to be short of cash in 90 days, let's create a strategy yep. and then get a different result in 90 days. So you have mentioned several times you've worked with medical practices and dental practices. Are those your only fields of expertise or who is it that you, I'm assuming that this Total Cash Clarity website and this works for every industry and every business out there. Think about it. It's designed for money in, money out. So people like to try and niche me into a place. But right. if you've got money coming in or going out of your business, cash flow is, um, that's my expertise. I've, I mean, a lot of um, experience has come from like construction. They've mm -hmm. got a lot of float in their money. So construction businesses are, uh, I've worked a lot with them. Restaurants, we're going deep into restaurant businesses. Because, really? Because... Um, well, There's yeah. a lot of money moving through a restaurant. You know what? And the life cycle of a restaurant can be short. Yes. I don't know precisely what the metrics is, but for them to survive a year. Mm -hmm. um, so we've got a booth at the Colorado Restaurant Show in September. So you can stop by and come visit us there. But um, yeah, I do medical, dental, um, construction, any business. I've worked uh, over 11 years. I have worked mm -hmm. with more than 100 different businesses. Wow. And that's, I mean, you can work with anyone in and out of the state, correct? Yes, especially with technology now. So I have a medical yep. practice I'm working with in Pueblo, and he and I have still not met face to face. Um, but we, I mean, we have on virtual. But, right. Yep. But you've never been down to his office, and he's never come up here to see you. He's coming up. He's oh, part is he? of, He's in the Crankset group. So. Oh, is he really? I think he's one of the Crankset. Yeah, that's how I got introduced to him through somebody there. Cool. Yeah. So. So bottom line is you, uh, you build your business a lot through referrals, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. And uh, if there's money coming or going inside of a business, you are the person to help them out. Well, if they want me to come and stir their pot and see what dirty little secrets are <laughs> going to bubble up, I'd That's be a right. good person to do that. Yeah. <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm kind about it. I'm not judgmental. I've learned over the years because there could be humility. I mean, you could be actually having to close your business, and I can help create an exit strategy, unfortunately, if that's the case. But there's a lot of shame and humility around money. There could be. So I just have learned to be graceful and non-judgmental with an mm -hmm. owner. I'm just looking at the numbers. Right. And that's the biggest thing is that, I mean, you've lived it, right? Yes. And we, you know, again, her backstory, she, you have absolutely lived that. So you understand what it is, uh, what's, what it's like to go through that. Um, so you actually have, have, again, that education and that knowledge base. So you can help people, um, if it's possible, turn their business around and help them become profitable. And I mean, 90 days, 90 to 90 days, yep. to six months. Yep. I mean, that has got to give people such good hope that, you know, my business can provide the type of life or, you know, the goals that I'm trying to achieve. I just, I need that, I need that person here at the table helping me, right? And you're with them every single month talking to them about it. Twice a month. Twice a month. Twice a month. I, I discipline them to have this conversation twice a month, and then they can contact me throughout the month. But we have a discipline. So that's the methodology. It implements mm -hmm. this discipline around money and their financial habits so that they understand that it takes intention. It takes discipline. It takes sacrifice sometimes. Yep. Maybe they can't take out as much money as an owner if they're going to execute a marketing strategy, for example. Mm -hmm. So... So you, you understand all facets of their business and really help them turn around. And a lot of that comes from those dirty little secrets that you have. Yes. And also, I'd like to say, I'm, again, with the CPA, I know my territory. I know yep. where my expertise ends and where I need to rely on the expert of a CPA or a financial wealth manager. Um, but the, the key is... I'm acting as a CEO in that conversation with my CEO client. So yep. I'm bringing a different dimension of that expertise on behalf of the business owner to make mm -hmm. sure they're asking the right questions to their CPA. Yeah. And that's, that's crucial. Again, you don't know what you don't know. Mm -hmm. Education is paramount. And you bring that education to the client so that they understand, okay, I actually need to be doing this differently. Mm -hmm. Right? Because you can only grow a business to a certain point without help. Right. right. Eventually, you need to hand over the reins of some piece of the business to someone else to let them manage it. 
Right. And sometimes I've reached my capability. So I'll do a shout out. May I do a shout out to another business? Absolutely. Um, so I have a client that's been with me. Cap Management has been with me. I've been their <clears throat> CFO for about 10 years. And we I can forecast their money to within hundreds of dollars and their you know, couple million dollar business here. Wow. So, um, but we're stuck and they want to become a second stage company, a true second stage company. So I reached out to a company that a business owner I know that is called True Space. Mm-hmm. So now I'm facilitating bringing in a new subject matter expert to help take this company to the next level. Perfect. And there's nothing wrong with that, right? No, that's my job. Yeah. Is I, these, are, these are my limitations. I'm not your expert. I don't know about those types of things. So I'll help them manage the, the budget and the money and the yep. finances part of that. But I needed to bring in another subject matter expert that would serve them best. Perfect. I mean, you're a true consultant in that, in that regard. Mm-hmm. All right. So if people want to get a hold of you, how do they do it? What's the best way to do it? Um, so you can call. Actually, you can call my personal number if you would like to learn more dirty yeah. little secrets okay and that's 303-901-4823 i'd be delighted for anybody that wanted to call me directly but go to my websites again uh, totalcashclarity.com which is up on the screen and mm-hmm. then centennial revenue management.com is my main website for my business perfect all right so what i've learned from this and again we've worked together on, on a handful of clients and uh, i have seen your uh abilities in action it's pretty awesome but dirty little secrets it's a real thing right you can get to the bottom of uh whatever's potentially ailing that business financially you know the secrets of a balance sheet you know the secrets of profit and loss you know how money comes and goes out of a business and the biggest thing is that you have this um this open mind mentality. And what I mean by that is let's bring the right people around the table, the CPA, right? The banker, the, the next CEO or a new CFO and help build this business to where it needs to be. Yes. And then our subscription service, the software is a software solution. It's not just an app. So we're going to do one monthly webinar and we'll educate. Um, if you're a subscriber, we're going to educate you on the components of cash flow. So we might talk about the bookkeeper, the keeper of the cash flow one mm-hmm. month, how to educate you on accountability for your CPA, accounts receivable, accounts payable, anything that's touching money in, money out. We're going to do monthly webinars on those topics. And that's through the Total Cash Clarity website. Correct. That's through the subscription base. Service. That's phenomenal. And and like you said, it's less than a haircut. It's less than a haircut. And then you get all of these dirty little secrets. So why wouldn't they do that? I don't know. Everybody should know about cash flow. If I were yeah. the boss of the world yeah. and I owned all of accounting responsibilities, I would say a business owner needs to produce a profit and loss, a balance sheet, ARAP, and a cash flow forecast. Really? Absolutely. Boss of the world. Boss of the, if I were boss of the world. <laughs> <laughs> well, you are the boss of all, the, all of your clients, and I'm sure they, they do love you. I know that. So. Oh, thank you. We've worked together for, yep. gosh, I don't know how many years now. We did our first client probably. Five, six years ago? At least, yeah. It's been, it's been yeah, crazy. It's been a while. Yeah. yeah. Crazy ride. It's been awesome. Well, Deborah, I really appreciate you coming in today. Thank Again, you. I'm 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 grateful to have you in here, and I I know the service that you provide. It's phenomenal, and I'm glad that you got this total cash clarity up and going. And I know it's been a labor of love for you, and uh, I hope the people that are listening can uh, take advantage of it. I mean, to tap into your dirty little secrets on a monthly basis is that's a huge opportunity. So congratulations. Thank you, and wishing you happy cash flow. <laughs> ah, I appreciate that. <laughs> Again, this has been the Foxstone Financial Wealth uh, Matters Show. Uh, as you can see from uh, this show, Deborah is absolutely impacting wealth in a tremendous way for business owners. And uh, if you want to get a hold, get a hold of her, uh, totalcashclarity.com and centennialrevenuemanagement.com. And again, that number was... Uh, 303-901-4823. Perfect. Again, Deborah Robinson... Uh, She is absolutely the wizard of cash flow and dirty little secrets. And uh, again, thank you for coming in and uh, best of luck to you going forward. Thank you. All right.